All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is a little bit different. Something that I've been thinking of doing. Chelsea's starting lineup, or probable, hopefully, hopeful starting lineup after the winter break going forwards, Chelsea's strongest lineup. I'm saying lineup loads. Basically, I want to talk about a potential starting 11 that we could see come back from right. Okay, let me, how can I speak English? How Chelsea could line up after the international break. There you go, easy. <laughs> That's what this video is. <laughs> yes, a couple of notable returnees from injury in Pulisic and Ruben Loftus cheek. So that's gonna be exciting. Plus I wanna talk about a few other players and how hopefully they could pick up form, etc., etc. Right. Before I get into all this good gear, I want to remind you guys quickly to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do subscribe. Why not hit that bell notifications icon, like the video to help me out, and why not follow me on Instagram? All right, let's get into it. So to do this video today, I wanted to go through each position on the pitch and talk about who I think should be playing there and why. Um, I want to maybe talk about formations as well, so let's open up the formation screen slash analysis screen. Alright, here we go. Next to me you can see two possible formations, 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1, which are the two formations Frank Lampard is likely to go with moving forward with his Chelsea side. So essentially I'm going to be talking about the goalkeeper, the back four, three players occupying the midfield in, in which is either a flat three or a holding two and a number 10 and of course the front three. Now this is going to be a little bit different because Chelsea have a bunch of good midfielders so really it's kind of horses for courses which midfield you deploy kind of depends on the opposition but generally I want to talk about Chelsea's strongest lineup. So let's start with the goalkeeper. The controversial talking point of the moment with Kepa Rida Balaga recently being dropped. Now new stories out in Spain have actually reported that Kepa, his form dropping is actually correlated with him breaking up with his childhood sweetheart of nine years. I might talk about this a little bit more in a different video and whether that's a legitimate reason for his form to drop off. Maybe it is, but I actually think he will be reintroduced to the side. I think Frank Lampard dropping him was an important and the right move, but I think he will bring him back in and try and nurture what is a talented young goalkeeper back into, into some form. And thinking and reflecting on it, I probably would want to see that. After a bit of Chelsea fan soul searching, I want to see him come back in the team and see what you can do. So it's Kepa Aretha Balaga between the sticks. Okay, arguably the easiest one on the pitch. Right back, yes, you guessed it, it's got to be Reese James. Right back, Reese, the strongest and most talented and most powerful right back that Chelsea have at the club. I was going to say in the league there, but I had to stop myself. One of the most promising young right backs in world football, absolutely lights up the right flank, makes the way Chelsea play, he, it's just so, so important. So he's at right back. Right, centre backs, this is a difficult one. Tamori played really, really well in the cup and then was dropped. Christensen was better defensively in the following game in the Premier League against Leicester, but Rudiger scored the goals. What to do? The thing is, this is going to be controversial, right? Rudiger scored the goals and he's got an excellent character, but I'm going to select Christensen and Tamori, which is... <laughs> <laughs> which kind of goes against the whole problem at Chelsea at the moment. The problem at Chelsea is no centre-back partnerships are being formed. You know, Tomori and Zuma had a bit of a partnership, but it doesn't look like Rudiger and Christensen are the selected players at the moment to develop a partnership. So maybe that makes mo the most sense, but in terms of just players and their strengths, I'm actually going to rely on more outfield players to score the goals, so Rudiger getting those goals aren't necessary. So I'm actually going to go with Christensen and Tamori. Controversial, Rudiger maybe, but I'm just gonna say those two for the moment. Right, this next one is another like big statement. Obviously, Aspilicueta is the first choice left back at the moment, but I'm gonna throw some faith back into Emerson Palmieri. He started the season so, so well. It's so easy to forget how well Emerson started the season before he dropped off. I think with a new inclusion in the left center mid spot, mm, spoiler, Ruben off his cheek, I actually think Emerson could be a lot better. Remember last season under Sari when it was Ruben Loftus-Cheek, 
Eden Hazard and Emerson all combining down the left flank, they were really, really good together. I think Emerson can combine with Ruben Loftus-Cheek still. I'm going to put trust back into him, a bit like Kepa. Start him at left back in what I think could be the strongest starting lineup for Chelsea. Come on, Emerson. So the midfield, the hardest part to sort of discuss, speculate, think about. Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I know he's only going to just be coming back into fitness, but he might be in the matchday squad as soon as Chelsea come back from the international break. Uh, it's not an international break, is it? It's a winter break. Still, I'm just saying he's fit. Ruben off his cheek, left centre mid, has to be at the expense of Mason Mount. I do like Mason Mount, but come on, it's Ruben off his cheek. Now the other two. <laughs> The other two spots are difficult. I don't actually think Ruben Loftus Cheek plays in a number 10, so in a 4 2 3 1, I probably would still play Mason Mount. I don't think Ruben Loftus Cheek does his best work there. I might actually play Ruben in a deep two, maybe on the left hand side with Kovacic next to him. I actually think Kovacic, Ruben, and Mason Mount in a midfield could be really, really deadly. Obviously, Jorginho and Kante are both excellent, um, but really, you could play any type of midfielder combo i think personally if chelsea need to unlock a uh, lower league opposition and they're deploying a deep block and you just need more attacking midfielders have mason mount have ruben off his cheek on the pitch at the same time why not so I'm saying it. Think about it. Don't just like start thinking, oh, Mason Mount favoritism. Think about what I'm saying with the opposition. You've got a low double block. Kante and Kovacic, Jorginho don't score goals. Ruben off his cheek. Mason Mount, both are more attacking. So have them both on the pitch at the same time. So mix and match whatever you want with the midfielders. They are all good. But in terms of a conventional 4-3-3, Mason Mount gets dropped and Ruben off his cheek comes in. And the other two are split between Kovacic, Jorginho and N'Golo Kante, of course. Probably Kante, but then Kovacic has been really good. Maybe Jorginho gets dropped, you know. I don't know. You decide. So that brings us on to the front three. Let's start with the striker. I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be Tammy Abraham. He was a bit injured lately, so even though he was getting into the scoring positions, maybe he was a few inches off the pace. Go, he's off on a winter break. He's going to relax. He's going to recover. He's going to come back in, train hard. He's going to be back in the number nine spot. No sort of qualms there, really. The only thing is maybe Giroud comes in for the second striker slot over Michy Batshuayi maybe. We'll have to see, there's a bit of a narrative there that we all follow that I'll keep you guys posted on, but Tammy Abraham is the striker. Right, now this is actually hard the next bit, because in terms of the wingers, we've obviously got three starting level wingers in Callum hudson who's been playing, Willian, who of course is a really important player for Frank Lampard, and the returning Christian Pulisic, who Chelsea have sorely missed of late, and we've missed basically attacking productivity on the pitch. So for me, Pulisic has to come back in on the left wing. So Pulisic's back in on the left wing. So who do you think? Willian on the right? Lampard's boy? Well, the thing is, I'm going to put Callum hudson Doy there. Now, I'll tell you why. I'm a huge fan of Willian, and I do think he is really, really important to this Chelsea side. But if you look at how Rhys James and Callum hudson Doy combine on the right-hand side, if you look at how important Rhys James could be and generally is to this Chelsea side, I think he combines better with Callum hudson Odoi because they've been playing together for years and years and years over Willian. And although hudson Odoi has been fading later on in games when his confidence drops, in terms of his raw power and ability, I think that's more valuable than Willian at the moment. So maybe you start with hudson Odoi and you bring Willian off the bench. So for me, that's the preferred front three in terms of strength. So Emerson at left back, Reese James at right back. I've chosen Christensen and Tamori as the centre back partnerships. I've reinstated Kepper as the number one in the goal. The front three is Tammy Abraham, flanked by Pulisic and Hudson Adoy, and the midfielders are mix and match. But if everyone's fit and on form, for me, a shoe in is Ruben Loftus cheek to start because it's so important to get that additional uh, attacking productivity in the pitch where Chelsea have been so mass sorely lacking this season. So that's my strongest lineup in a couple of different formations and maybe a few switches in midfield depending on the formation and opposition. Right, so you've had a good look at that, so let's get rid of the analysis formation screen. So it's interesting, isn't it? What do you think? I want to get everyone's thoughts and opinions on my lineup. Let me know who you'd start in the left back position. Would you give Emerson another chance like I would after 
a pretty poor barren spell of form that he's had. I know Azpilicueta is Mr. Consistent at left back, but if you want optimum productivity, if Emerson can find form, him combining down the left hand side with Ruben off the cheek and maybe Pulisic, I think a lot can be had with that. I'm pretty darn sure that none of you would have any arguments with Reece James dying at right back. What do you think about midfielders? Let me know your combination. And yeah, what about wingers? Could you drop Willian for Hudson Adoy? That's another really big talking point. I've explained my case why I would do it, but I want to hear what you guys would do. So get down in the comment section. I'll be down there reading your thoughts on the lineup. Let me know who's your preferred players. If you have enjoyed my video today, guys, please do like the video. And remember to subscribe to Football therapy if you are indeed new and also follow me on social media at football yannick on both instagram and twitter please also why not tell your friends about football therapy it's been going really really well lately i'm pushing well i'm on 38,500 subscribers or something i'm on the road to 40,000 subscribers which is absolutely immense my projections if things stay at a good rate is i could be on 50,000 subscribers by the end of the season which is just absolutely mega. Maybe by the end of the Euros, actually, is a little bit more realistic. But still, I really appreciate all you guys coming to see the videos, commenting, liking, showing your support. It really does mean a lot to me. So let's keep this train going. Subscribe, please, if you're new. Why not tell your friends, if you've got Chelsea fans, that are friends, they might like this channel. And who knows, maybe people who aren't Chelsea fans, just football fans, spread the love. Thank you so much for stopping by. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.